the line between original and replica is a fine line indeed at a studio called Factum Arte. Seth Doan takes us inside. High tech meets timeless craft in this Madrid workshop, where they're reimagining the art of preservation. Here they're finalizing a 21st century version of a 16th century BC sculpture. It's utterly realistic, yet not real. There's no artistic license. This sarcophagus of Seti I is a reproduction accurate to one-tenth of a millimeter. You have all of these different people working in different rooms and yeah, different eras. Absolutely. So um, Factor Marty is really like one of those uh, ideas of a Renaissance-type workshop, but in the 21st century. The man behind this place, called Factor Marte, is Adam Lowe. He's clad in the khaki colors of Indiana Jones and has the curiosity to match. Their mission, he acknowledges, can be difficult to explain. Normally I say something slightly evasive, like we're trying to use technology to preserve cultural heritage. But what we're really doing is we're trying to redefine the relationship between originality and authenticity. Their efforts to preserve cultural heritage involve going deep inside ancient tombs to chapels and famed museums, all to record masterpieces exactly as they are using high-tech scanners. We can actually study this data um, up to five or six times magnification without any data loss. So in fact, you can see the surface of the tomb better in the digital files than you can see with the naked eye on site. How? Why? Because you can keep zooming in. So it's like a, a doctor using a microscope. After the object is recorded, Factum Arte reproduces it in-house using 3D printers and milling machines to create a base layer with all of the grooves and marks of the original. In this work, so-called skins are printed and laid on top. We're ensuring they're perfectly aligned with the surface underneath. And once they're in the right place, we put them into a vacuum bag and suck them so that the contact adhesive forms a permanent bond. The result, not just the look of the original. And as you rub your finger over it, you can feel the relief. You can feel where it was carved. Absolutely, and you look at this deep crack and you can run your finger right down in the middle of that. And at that point, you believe it. Lowe argues that substitute can be just as satisfying as seeing the real thing. But we still want to go to the Louvre to see the original Mona Lisa. It's not enough to see a print. I totally agree. But hanging in front of the original Mona Lisa is the original wedding at Cana by Veronese, which was one of the first big projects we worked on. Technicians from the Factum Foundation scanned the original wedding at Cana at the Louvre in Paris. And in 2007, the facsimile was hung in the original space in Venice, filling a gaping more than 700 square foot hole. We know the one in the Louvre is more original, but the experience of the facsimile in Venice is perhaps more authentic. Considering a copy more authentic is a provocative point of view and I'd go to a dinner party in London, and I'd say, I'm making a facsimile of the tomb of Seti I, everyone would go, how horrible. It was one of those things that it had touched the prejudice that so many people hold. We recoil at this idea of forgeries, of fakes. Well, there's a, a fake is something that's intentionally deceitful. There is no deceit. We're very public about what we do. Everything's declared that it's a facsimile, and it's not trying to replace the original. It's trying to support the original. Factum makes only one facsimile, while all of the scanned data belongs to the institution caring for the object. They also train local people to do the scanning and see their work as crucial to the preservation of tombs like that of Egyptian pharaoh Seti I. Which, we have to remember, was built to last for eternity, but never to be visited. Cathedrals were built to be visited. Um, museums were built to be visited. Tombs were not. Replicating a tomb is a technological twist on preservation, 
far from the methods practiced 200 years ago. Here's what one wall of Seti's tomb looked like when it was discovered by the Italian explorer Giovanni Belzoni in the early 1800s. Now look at it today. Belzoni gouged out what he wanted to take home. The strange thing is what was done in the name of preservation. Lowe created a panel to show the crude attempt at preserving. At that time, the colonial arrogance that the only way to preserve this was to remove it from the wall. And why remove this cartouche when you're in the most beautiful room in the tomb? In one of their latest large-scale works, Lowe's team recreated the so-called Hall of Beauties of Seti I's tomb and exhibited the breathtaking room last year in Basel, Switzerland. It will eventually find a permanent home in Egypt's Valley of the Kings near another of Factum's monumental recreations, an exact copy of the burial chamber of Tutankhamun. And you can still see the original tomb of Tutankhamun. And we're getting lots of people doing both. And the response we're getting is extraordinary. If you can't tell the difference and you know through one, you're helping the local community by being there, you're helping preserve the tombs by being there, and by the other, you're contributing to their destruction, which do you end up choosing? For a company that spends so much time studying the past, it's contemporary artists who are generally clients and use Factum's technology to create new objects and surfaces. What are you doing here? <laughs> it's a sort of a fanta fantastic monster, I would say. Right it's now. that work that pays the bills and allows Adam Lowe's Factum Foundation to continue developing their modern take on preservation, following the ideas set in ancient Egypt. Their goal was to build a tomb, build an environment filled with human knowledge that would last for eternity. That was the goal, and it, and it did. The hope here is this too will last, albeit in digital form or as a facsimile, a snapshot of the original as it is today.